Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 68 for May 24th, 2021 with your host, Lori Reston. Hi, welcome to today's podcast. I'm your host, Lori, and today's episode is entitled A Proverbs 31 Woman. Now, I know that I'm a little late with saying this, but I want to wish all the moms out there a very happy Mother's Day. I truly hope you all had a very special day. Now, I was working remotely the week before Mother's Day, so I wasn't able to record a podcast that week. But even though I'm off only by a few weeks, I really think moms should be celebrated, not just one day a year, but every day, especially Christian moms, because being a Christian in today's world is tough enough. But being a Christian mother in today's world, well, that's really tough. And there are plenty of reasons why I say that, but that could take all day. So let's just say the world's a different place than it was even a generation ago. Mothers today have some very unique challenges that make it very difficult. But even so, being the type of mother that God wants us to be can be accomplished with His help and direction. Today, I'd like to focus on some scripture found in Proverbs 31. It describes that perfect woman so many Christian women strive to be. It says, starting in verse 10, A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hands, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Wow, what a woman. I think it's easy to see why the Proverbs 31 woman has long been held up as the ideal Christian woman and mother, because she's a woman of character and she manages her household so well. But many think, as I often have, that she's just too perfect and it's nearly impossible to measure up to her. Others think she's outdated and old-fashioned. But deep down, we know that all of her supermom qualities are what a good mom should possess. And what's so awesome is that she has such a great attitude when she's doing it. So why can't we? You know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, this Proverbs 31 woman doesn't really get a good night's sleep. She works all day with no breaks. She makes time for her husband. She brings home the bacon, fries it up in a pan, and never lets him forget he's a man, because she's a Proverbs 31 woman. She also gives to her family, her city, and the needy, and then still somehow manages to be loving, kind, and patient. Now, I don't know what kind of coffee she must be drinking, but it must be extremely high-test caffeine. Really good stuff, because I just can't imagine being able to juggle all the demands of her time. Moms are just so busy these days. You know what moms go through on a daily basis. We've become the masters of multitasking, but we easily get burned out going in many different directions. Sometimes we feel there's no use trying to be the type of mother God wants us to be because it's just not possible. Yet it is. It really is. You see, we have to move past our feelings of inadequacy because our feelings are not a reflection of the truth. Truth is, we can apply biblical principles in our lives and be the kind of wives and mothers God wants us to be. But hear me, it won't happen overnight, especially for those of us who weren't raised in the church. It can take time. 
To me, it's obvious that this Proverbs 31 woman wasn't a young wife and mother. I say that because I know it takes time to gain a good reputation and respect. It takes time to gain wisdom. The results of hard work don't just happen overnight. And I'm sure that through life's trials and tribulations, she learned to be dependent upon God to provide through any hardship. And that's something that comes with maturity and age. So with that in mind, just how do we follow her example? How do we become the godly mother that she exemplifies? Well, I believe the first thing we have to do is marry the right man. If you want to be a Proverbs 31 mother, you've got to build your family by marrying a respected, hardworking, and godly man. You see, part of becoming a good mother, according to this Bible passage, is to start by finding a good man, one that you respect and one that respects you in return. This also means that you must be committed to each other and committed to raising your family under God's directions. This is a must. Next, you must trust and obey the Word of God. God will grant you the tools and wisdoms you need to raise a godly family if you trust in Him. But not only should you have faith and trust in God, but so must your children and your spouse. Teach your family about how to live a righteous life. You must raise your children in the way of the Lord in order to become a Proverbs 31 mother. And lastly, you need to provide for your family. Now, I'm not just talking about financial support. I'm also talking about emotional and spiritual support and giving your family the necessities of life. Let's face it, not many will take verse 15 literally. Most women won't get up every morning while it's still dark out or go out and plant a vineyard. But even so, we must be prepared to work hard to provide for our families. Whether it's working at a job, cooking meals, or raising your kids, Working at it with all your heart will make you a virtuous mother. Now, these three suggestions may seem difficult at times, and maybe to some extent you're right, because you can't do it in your own strength, but with God's power you can. And if you still don't believe it's possible, then let me tell you about someone in real life who achieved this seemingly impossible goal. Now, when I think about the impact of what a mother can accomplish with her children and her family, there's always one name that comes to my mind. And that name is Sarah Edwards. Now, in case you don't know who she was, she was the wife of Jonathan Edwards, the famous 1700s Puritan preacher and theologian. Now, both of them were very, very godly people from two wonderful Christian families. And on their wedding night, they committed their marriage to the Lord. Together, they had 11 children, eight girls and three boys. And her life was a great example of how mothers can serve God in the everyday. She took her role as wife and mother very seriously, and her main goal was to raise godly children. Now, a man named Samuel Hopkins, who lived with them for a while, was obviously very impressed with how she raised her children. He wrote that she had an excellent way of governing them. She knew how to make them regard and obey her cheerfully, without loud, angry words, much less heavy blows. A second man by the name of Noel Piper also noted that she prayed for them earnestly even before they were born. But it's one report of her life written in 1900 by a man named A.E. Winship that really blew me away. He did a historical family tree of the Edwards family, tracking down 1,400 of their descendants. At the same time, he also compared the Edwards family with another family of that same time period known as the Jukes family, and his results were astounding. His analysis showed that the Edwards descendant included 300 clergymen, some of those missionaries, 100 professors, 100 attorneys, 30 judges, one dean of a law school, 60 physicians, one dean of a medical school, three mayors of large cities, 60 authors of fine classics, 14 presidents of universities, three state governors, three U.S. senators, one chaplain of the U.S. Senate, one controller of the U.S. Treasury, and one vice president of the USA. Now that is very impressive to say the least. But what is really impressive to me is that he went on to conclude that much of the capacity and talent, intensity and character of the more than 1,400 of the Edwards family was due to Mrs. Edwards. Now that's really impressive. But let's take a moment and compare the Edwards family to the Jukes family I told you about earlier. Now, Max Jukes was a non-believer who married a woman of like character. She lacked principles among other indecencies, including the occult. Of their 1,200 descendants, 310 were professional vagrants. 
440 wrecked their lives through debauchery. 130 went to jail. Seven for murder, with 13 years being the average sentence. More than 600 became alcoholics. 60 were habitual thieves. 190 became public prostitutes. 20 became tradesmen, out of which 10 learned their trade while in prison. This family cost the state of New York roughly $1.25 million. So mothers, let me ask you, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? What do you want to pass down to your children and grandchildren? Well, I think the choice is very clear, and that choice will have a great impact on future generations. Have you ever heard of R.W. Wallace? Well, he wrote a famous poem, and one of the lines stated that the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. He undoubtedly knew that it's mothers who make the greatest impact on society. Because you see, mothers not only shape their homes, but they ultimately shape the nation. And that's an awesome responsibility. And that responsibility can't be taken lightly. Our children are watching, and our actions significantly impact their lives. I submit to you that there's not a person listening to this podcast right now that has not been forever influenced by their mother. But the question is, what type of influence was it? Well, I can't answer that for you, but I do know this. I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. And even though I've made plenty of mistakes, I don't want to keep making them because I don't want my mistakes to negatively affect my kids or grandkids. So I'm not looking back because God asks us not to. And I'm doing all I can to be the kind of woman God wants me to be today. Am I perfect? No, absolutely not. I am not perfect, but I am trying. And I encourage you to try too. I encourage you to do all that you can to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Because if we ever needed to rise to the challenge, it's now. Today, more than any other time in history, our society needs the influence of godly mothers. The most effective mothers on the planet teach biblical principles and then seek to live them out themselves. And that's important because, you see, you can't teach what you don't know. You really can't. Parents do right when they know right. And more is caught than taught. We have to have godly principles down on the inside of us and then live them out in front of our kids to be effective. But even if you haven't been the mother God has called you to be, don't let Satan condemn or discourage you. Just turn to God and ask Him to help you get back on track. It's been said that some mothers make a positive difference in the lives of their children, but others make an eternal difference. What can be said of you? Righteousness alone exalts a nation, and it's also a reflection of what the future holds for its people. My prayer is that the influence of godly mothers might increase in our world to make an eternal difference in the kingdom of God. If you're struggling with being a woman of influence, whether that be at home or in your community, we want to help. We have team members standing by who would love to coach you towards making positive change. Just contact us at info at thevalorcenter.org and let us know how we can assist you. Now, one thing you can do in the meantime is check out Valor Excel's two new books, You Were Made to Thrive, Seven Strategies to Move You from Crisis to Thriving, and the Companion Goal Setting Workbook. These books are designed to help you start living the thriving life that you've always dreamed of. Now, you'll be amazed at what you can achieve once you start putting these strategies into action. Now, you can find out more information or purchase them through Amazon in paperback or Kindle version. Or you can also find them on our website at www.valorexcel.com products. If you'd like to get up-to-date information about Valor, you can connect with us on our websites at www.thevalorcenter.org or www.valorexcel.com. Or you can find us on Facebook at Valor Ministries or Valor Excel. We'd love to connect with you on social media to inspire you and encourage you on your journey. You can also email us at media at thevalorcenter.org and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover on future podcasts. We want to make sure we're producing content that is relevant to you, so reach out anytime. If this episode has been a blessing to you, would you please like, share, and subscribe to this channel? If you do, You'll help get the word out about these episodes, which are designed to provide hope, no matter what the circumstance. Or you can financially support us in our efforts. 
Your generous donations are tax deductible and they allow us to create even more content designed to help people thrive in both life and business. Just visit www.thevalorcenter.org and click on the donate button to give securely online. Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. I'd like to thank you for spending some time with us today, and I hope you'll come back again for next week's episode. Until then, remember this, you were made to thrive.